groups, they go over in a few minutes. Over there down to the left, you see the captain's little boat. That's where we're going to sail from tomorrow when we do our captain cruise. We go in and out of circular gear. This is the hub of the harbour transport. And the other end of the wharf is where you get the, the ferries to the zoo, to the zoo and um, across to Manly. Somebody asked about going to visit the beachside suburb of Manly. So all the ferries go from that area, circular key. Um, just remember, you're going to come down the outside of the area. When you come out of the doors, that's where the box office is, and there's a shop up there as well. When you come out of the doors, there's a square. Right, so uh, this is uh, the southern square one of uh, just a few areas. The people who would sort of help uh, an architect, the people who do generally help architects and understand how, how you can construct their designs are structural engineers. And the structural engineers who work on the appropriate came from the prestige of London firm Ove Arabian Partners. They suggested to us that if you wanted to have an elliptically shaped and involved roof structure, someone would have to design and then have constructed it. A massive series of mold, or sorry, massive series of forward. And inherent in this sort of solution were actually a number of problems. Firstly, they had no idea how long it would take to design, build the relevant formworks, pouring concrete in situ. And this instance would eliminate it. Uh, and there are two different types of uh, tile. There's buff and off-white. The buff tone tiles tend to find themselves around the edge of the panels. They help to delineate the line and curvature. Right. Off-white predominates. Now, they don't absorb moisture. If they don't absorb moisture, nothing grows on them. If nothing grows on them, we don't have to clean them. Giving us no less than one. North of that beacon out there. And upon seeing uh, the spout of water, I saw the whale, or we all saw the whale. For the next ten minutes, I tell you, we were all you know, in raptures over this uh, whale. Actually, you can't see a whale there. You can see a floating plastic bottle. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's amazing. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, it was amazing. And I guess they were the only group in the ten years I've done this job that never got the spherical solution. So. <laughs> But uh, slow down the mouth of uh, circular heat there, which is where all the ferries come in and out. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, they were doing a counterterrorism exercise. So big black, you know, black hole helicopters full of SAS troops, guys who sort of help out the special forces, you know, the Delta Force, Australian guys. And and I thought, oh, that was interesting. It was hovering right over our ferry. Not that interesting because I could see the. the uh, the uh, uh, shadow of it on the water, and so I, I tried my little three-year-old daughter out to see this, and we didn't see it, we didn't see it come directly above us. We saw it said two little penguins, I think that's there, the proper stone. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Now we have to do that. Sorry. You just need to start sound yet. No, I don't, because it, it varies, because uh, even if there's not a rehearsal, there might be people on stage, so we're, we're finding it very unusual to even to say at the start as well, it's nice. But if you had to share my bundle. No, it's, it's not part of the external design. <coughs> Peter Hall didn't have a lot of latitude uh, for research and development, so kind of breakthrough stuff. He did what? <clears throat> anyone here from New York? Anyone been? Yeah, you guys, have, has anyone here been to, like, here the New York Philharmonic and ever been to the Avon Fisher Hall? Yeah, I, I mean, you, you, you will know that someone comes from New York and watches symphony when they constantly, they tell me about, how's the acoustics in your hall? You know, we had the Avery Fisher Hall. Well, I guess maybe with that, ex that example, they were trying to do something new, I don't know, but, Peter Hall based his design on something tried and tested, the Berlin Philharmonic, hmm. uh, which sort of opened around about the same time as the Avery Fisher, Fisher Hall. Uh, and so it had been around long enough uh, for uh, 
the world to recognise that it was the world's foremost hall acoustically at that time for orchestral music. Of, of soft and hard. Uh, the soft wood ceiling uh, is a white birch lime plywood. Uh, the hardwood that surrounds us is brush box. It's a native uh, hardwood. Uh, the shapes and surfaces, uh, oh, bless you. The shapes are such that they'll break up sound waves. We call them reverberant surfaces. So as the sound waves travel through the hall, they get broken up sufficiently that they, you know, when they get to the end of the hall, they don't come back. It doesn't echo. The clear plastic rings that you see suspended above the platform are there to provide fold back to the musicians. So you play your instrument, most of the sound waves travel through the hall, and I've hit the edge of the rings, come down to you, delivering a, a sufficient clarity of sound that enables you, the musician, to adjust your pitch accordingly. They're called acoustic clouds. Mm. Mm. So there'll be amplification tonight because Diane Reeves is using a mic and so uh, and also the sort of looks like the trio are also amplified, hence the necessity for a low level amplification of the orchestra to balance the sound mix. Uh, the organ up there, you can see 104 pipes, it has 10,154 pipes. Wow. It, it's a dual purpose mechanical action organ, which means it uses levers and pistons and some electronics. Mm. It has five keyboards. It has such an array of pedals at the base of the instrument here that if you were talented enough, you could tap out a tune with your feet, look in the audience and say, look, mum, no hands. <laughs> yeah, some people would think that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think that's unusual at all. So uh, where, where's the where's the console then? So who designed it? Who, who, where's the console? The console is right up there because you use oh, it. Oh, way up there. Okay. Yep, right up there. Who designed it? An Australian. His name's Ronald Sharp. Uh, and uh, the the pipes were sourced from the Netherlands in what was then West Germany. It took, it took like ten years to build. We used to say it took two years to tune originally. And then one of the organ tuners said, oh, that's rubbish, that's rubbish. It did take a while to settle and tune, but normally it only takes eight days to tune. <laughs> eight days. It takes an hour and a half for our piano tuner to tune that Steinway and Sons Grand piano. <laughs> and uh, it takes, it, you've got to have two people tuning the organ. One's pressing the menu going, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> that sort of thing. It's, I, I know because when I started in this job, we used to have a lot of inbound tour groups come in for just 20 minutes into the hall. And we had so many that we would position people all over the place. And I just started and I drew the straw, uh, which said I was to be in the concert hall for about four hours, four or five hours. And, and I thought, wow, that's great. That's a nice place to be in. And, uh, and it was the day, the day, the eight day that they were tuning me off. <laughs> <laughs> I my co-workers knew something I did. You hear about those sort of tests that they do in the army to test, you know, how, how much you can take. Here. Every night, or no, no, no. It, it, it's, it's, it's probably the quietest of our venues. Yeah, uh, it does about 270 performances a year. Yeah. Or events. Sorry. How long would you say it took? Well, uh, to tune and settle originally, it did take two years, but uh, they had to do it in situ, it, right in there, and you had a lot of performances and events to get around. Uh, and uh, you know, it's over ten thousand pounds. Oh. Yeah, but uh, yeah, if if this was just a hall dedicated for the organ, it probably would have taken a lot. It would have been a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, it was quite mm -hmm. a, it was quite a job. But <coughs> if it's used ten times professionally in a year, I'd say that's a really good year for it. It's just had four concerts really? with the symphony, so that's pretty good for it. Uh, but you you'll get private schools, you know, really, you know. Really, a lot of money. Get your kids here, get to it, into it. Uh, where they'll, they'll hire the school at the end of the year for prize giving. 
ceremony. And and some student will be sent up there to play the school anthem and hopefully something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, generally that'll happen uh, throughout the year and there might be other sort of concerts. Uh, you might have a travelling choir who, who uh, might use it. Uh, they, the Sydney Philharmonia Choir, which is the main choral group in, in the city, th they don't use that organ that much uh, because it just depends on the program they're doing. You know, if, they, if you go through a year where they're doing a lot of Bach and Handel or Mozart, there's not much chance of them using that. But if they're doing things from like the mid 19th century through to the 20th century, then there's a better chance that it might be used. Mm. Uh, any other questions? <coughs> and it's, it's true to say that in this hall we've done everything from symphony through to sumo wrestling. <laughs> Less of the sumo. <laughs> and uh, for all those sumo fan fans, I don't think I've had any sumo wrestling here for about 20 years. So, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the opera company went through a phase, I think, in the late 80s, mm -hmm. where, and even even before then, where they, they tried to compensate for the, the lack of stage space uh, and do some grand operas. Yeah, but it, it's it's quite problematic because you take that whole area back there. That yeah, you can put a vast, incredible stage set there, but a grand opera requires a grand orchestra, mm -hmm. and there was a big change in opera theatre design because of Wagner in the eighteen in the mid to eighteen hundreds. Because his orchestras were much too big for the theatres, and so were his operas as well uh, for the theatres that were designed. And uh, so you'd have a, the same situation that, say, people like Wagner would have gone through in the mm. 1840s if you had an offering here, because you'd have an orchestra in very close proximity to <coughs> a very large orchestra. And the acoustics also don't suit singing as, as much as they do for orchestra. How about Puccini? Has he ever been invited here? Puccini? Mm -hmm. Andre Puccini? Uh, Oh, Pocelli. Pocelli? Pocelli, yeah. 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 Close Pocelli. enough. Pocelli yeah. hasn't, Pocelli hasn't Pocelli. really answered our call. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I keep asking. <laughs> Pocelli, yes. He, he was here. He was here during the Olympic Arts and Cultural Festival. He was performing here one night before, before the opening ceremony. And it cost like mm, $1,500 or something. Wow. But of course, don't worry, that we, there were a lot of people who got him for free, they were from the IOC. So, <laughs> don't worry, it's, it's a really, you know, really, <laughs> IOC, you don't know the IOC? <laughs> the International Olympic Committee. Oh. Just, just go back in, in time and go to Salt Lake City. Corruption. Controller.